We are finally going to test soft nuts or textile passive pro or whatever you call this stuff that people use in the Czech Republic sandstone where you're not really allowed to use real hard nuts or cams or really technically anything that would actually work. So uh, we're gonna slack snap all sorts of stuff today for you guys. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Ryan Jinks, and welcome to a Slack Snap episode. There are two things that I don't understand. One, why so many people want us to test this, and two, why it took us so long to test this. It's only knots. It really wasn't that hard to prep. We have 17 samples, holy cow, <laughs> that we are going to test today. And then we can do follow-up videos, maybe in Real Rock, maybe Monkey Fists, maybe UFO cam things later. 17 is already too much for one episode. People have been sharing Jenny Fisher's videos on the soft gear that she uses in the Czech Republic sandstone. Welcome to my tech rack. <laughs> so this is the variety of knots that we have on us today. Um, starting over here, we have some simple double overhand knots. I like to call them barrels. They uh, are a passive placement. And then a uh, selection of different thicknesses of figure eight knots. Um, these have more of an active placement to them. Then uh, I call these guys micro knots. Um, Shiji calls them flat knots. They're just simple overhand knots and some, some wide webbing. Uh, these do really good is passive placement in, in small placements and where there's a lot of friction. And then over here, uh, a couple of extra slings. Usually we have a lot more slings than this. We just have a couple today. Uh, it's nice to have ones that are of different thicknesses. Uh, the, the wider ones are preferable because it distributes the force on the rock a little bit more. And uh, it's, it's nice to have this thin one too. Um, it's really good for, for poking through small spaces. Apparently that sandstone is too soft for you to rely on it or to use metal gear. I guess it would damage it. Now, if the rock is too soft for my gear to be placed, do I really want to be climbing on it? I don't know, but we are going to test whether or not the knots are strong, the ropes are strong, and we're going to fix a problem that doesn't exist. We're going to try putting soft shackles where they don't belong. <laughs> All right, I'll give you a 10 second tour of the slack set machine and we'll get started. This is not the slack set machine. This is bonus material. This is a drop tower. We are priming it. That is wet and I am very excited. We also have beams over there and stuff and it's gonna look something like that and we are going to do a lot of science. But today we are using our slow pull test machine which has a rectangle with a slack line holding a hydraulic being kept in place by our paracord so it doesn't recoil too badly, extended with a span set to our cam crusher adapter that was terrible for cams, but great for passive protection. And uh, our dynamometers and Bobby. Okay, we're gonna start with our five millimeter samples here. We have an overhand knot, a figure eight, and basically a stopper knot, but with two strands. And you can see here that this 0.5 black diamond Camelot C4 is about the same size. And you kind of see here, it's about the size of this larger nut from this DMM rack. So yeah, this is actually much larger than it looks, which is what I always say about my nuts. Let's start with the overhand. We're going to cinch this up and we're gonna put it in like that and make sure it's tight before we film it. So according to Jenny, the hardest part about using these is the placement. And we're kind of cheating that <laughs> with our made to order placements here. <laughs> oh. Doing research, I read that people carry uh, dowels and a, a little hammer to place these nuts properly. That should hold. Let's find out. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was amazing. All right. We are gonna get this way closer and try again. Science. Mm. 
Yeah, that pulled through. It looks like it broke in the knot in there. Oh, it definitely... Not. How are we going to get this out, Bobby? <laughs> that got super squished in there. Basically, if you fall on these things, you're going to have a heck of a time trying to get them out. What? That's terrifying. This thing is so tight, it barely fit. You can see just how flat this is. I'll try to go tighter, but like, I don't see what the point of a figure eight is. It's not like it's a fat knot, but I have placed it in there so tight now that I could barely get this rope through that gap. That thing went almost to the very end, broken the knot. So this thing is very abraded and it's very thin. So two strands of that five mil is, is not much thinner than this. So it makes it kind of a hard placement. Let's see what the two-legged stopper knot does. That is not as round as I thought it like changed shape dramatically. I think if these things might be preset, it would be a little bit different. Would I whip on that, Bobby? You can get a stronger placement for that size if you're using metal. Is this a good time to try the soft shackles out? Ooh, not yet. Okay, so the next three we're gonna test is an overhand, an eight, and another stopper. And this stopper is very similar to a 0.75. Um, and these, I don't know. I'm not quite sold on why you would do an eight versus an overhand. They seem to be like the same size. I don't know if this surface area makes a difference in the rock. We don't really have friction in this machine. So this is, I believe, a dynamic. Doesn't this look so similar to our rope catcher? <laughs> so let me just stick that in there. Adjust my crack. There we go. Let's see if it pulls out of my crack. Oh, no way. WTF. Okay, this is interesting how the size difference between here and the rope is not quite enough to stay in in this. We did a video where we tested nuts, so I know I know this thing works. But this thing was as tight as the thickness of the rope. So I don't know. I'll just go straight to the figure eight and then to the other stopper. Come on, baby! Come on! <laughs> no way! <laughs> I would whip. But, oh man, this is a one whip wonder. You wouldn't want to use this again if you actually... I don't know, do you think friction would make a difference? We usually have friction in the comments. Let us know if you think that'll help. Wow, look at all the fibers. Fuzzy, fuzzy fibers. Break, break, come on. That's our pullout strength. That is gnarly. Okay, so this is an 11 millimeter rope and this stopper knot is the equivalent of this number two here. So I'm curious what happens if you just use like a single strand. So we're gonna test this in there and this is what we're gonna connect it to. And that is more like the equivalent of a number one. Let's pull on these three and I think having this in here, keeping this from going closer and this being tight, we should be able to break this. And it slipped. <laughs> it like deformed. Like this, this gap right here is not any bigger than, than the thickness of that rope. And this thing squished through it, which just shows how much uh, friction plays a role in this. But 
knots really change shape. I feel like I shouldn't stand next to this. Well, golly, there's a result for you. Oh my God, what is even going on here? This is a sterling rope that meets requirements for something. All right, that is amazing. How not to highlight? I'm learning that this isn't working, but 12 Kula Newtons is pretty strong considering that that's also really fat rope. So I'm kind of discouraged this stuff is slipping, but we have our samples here. We are going to complete these tests. Uh, please put in the comments below. You want to see us do this in real rock. I want to know the engagement is high enough to basically do these all again. Anyways, we have a, just a Mammut Dyneema sling with a knot in it, a 916 webbing with a knot in it. This is an 1116 black diamond sling that we did the is a myth uh, video and then we have a 16th 16th i think i'm so funny a one inch webbing with a knot in it i cinched this down <laughs> before doing it we finally broke it i would whip on 8.4 kilonewtons That is impressive for a little tiny piece of webbing. I feel, I think that's stronger than some cams we've tested. Fifteen point one five. Wow, that is rock hard in there. I have to take a hammer to take this out. Wood whip. So I did not test the sling because it, come to find out, is 18 millimeters, which is the same as the other one we did. So it's all around that 12 kilonewton range would be this guy, 15 kilonewtons is this guy. And uh, yeah, so now we got some goodies. Now I'm pretty excited about this part. I don't know anybody that uses soft shackles for soft passive pro, um, but the heads are pretty strong when these are set. And so what we have is uh, four, five, six mil, and eight mil. And I just checked with the calipers. This one here is an overhand knot. The rest are button knots. But uh, you know, we'll find out if the heads deform. I'm going to basically cinch it down as tight as I can. I have a feeling these are going to be pretty strong. <laughs> What the hell? <laughs> All right, well, maybe this won't work so good. Let's try a bigger one. Okay, so the green is just fuzz from the last one, but what the hell? It deforms it so much. It's like, <laughs> it's rock hard. is very flat. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> okay, so that thing is in there pretty tight. What the heck? Dang it. That's what makes these things fun. All right, I don't need to pull on this anymore. I'm afraid I'm gonna break something else and you're never gonna get anything near there. So soft shackles are somewhat bomber. Different results than I was expecting. The knot's really deformed, and I'm wondering if friction on a rock would hold it in place or if the knot would actually still deform. 
we now have an 81 to 1 pulley system that we can generate. We tested yesterday, actually, 25 kilonewtons with just these guns here. And so definitely can uh, break some stuff with that. But I'd like to know if you guys are interested in this enough for me to go out and do that. I have been requested for, I think, two years now to have to be testing these. We do listen to your requests. It just takes sometimes a while to get to stuff. Uh, when I'm done trying to figure out how load cells work and drop towers, then uh, this will be a lot easier to uh, get to your requests a lot faster. Uh, we're going to try to follow the like the hot topics on Reddit or whatever that's going on and try to do things that are a little bit more relevant to the community while it's relevant. But I think this still is. And I want to thank Jenny Fetcher for showing me how she did this, what she thought might be more of the issue rather than just the knot strength itself. So check out her Instagram. She's constantly posting stuff like this. Take the helmet, try not to die. And, and don't forget to have fun.